This holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service, can help you fuel up for brekkie, lunch, or dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight <laughs> to your door. They just drop them at your door, people. You'll save time and eat well. You'll stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while taking all of your holiday to-dos in stride with good meals in the tum-tum. If you're too busy with all this stuff, these meals are easy. Easy to get done. They taste great. All you've got to do is head over to factormeals.com slash expandingreality50 and use code expandingreality50 to get 50% off. That's code expandingreality50 at factormeals.com slash expandingreality50 to get 50% off. David's Bridal, where brides and bridesmaids get fabulously dressed. We let our friends pick out what we wear, show off our dance moves, obsess over every little detail, hold your hand through it all, smile bravely when it's time to let go, make your dreams come true. The things we do for love, only at David's Bridal. A choice right now, right now, between fear and love. It's just a run. Out of the dark night of ignorance and into the shining light of truth. Expounding reality. A population of citizens capable of critical thinking. We don't see things as they are, we see them as we are. There's a level of reality where everything dissolves into an ocean of energy. We empower our experience by insisting on our authenticity. That's very profound. Very Expanding Reality. Welcome to Expanding Reality. I am your host, Brandon Thomas. On this episode, a very fun and amazing one. We have Tommy Chong stops by. Of course, the Canadian actor and comedian comes by and hangs out. We just talk about all things amazing. So he tells some phenomenal stories, by the way. This dude's an awesome storyteller. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's Tommy Chong, you know, so we, we have a blast. So you guys are really going to enjoy this. So I uh, just wanted to tell you about our affiliate links real quick before we get to it. So Food Forest Abundance, get your freedom from fear on Jim Gale's work. And it is linked down in the show notes. It's amazing. Uh, Libsyn down there, that's who I host my podcast through. If you would like to start a podcast, use the Libsyn link. I think you get two months free, something like that when you sign up for a month. So it's a great deal anyway. So you really don't have much to lose. Uh, also, there is an Amazon link down there that is an affiliate link. So if you were going to buy a bong, let's say, uh, then do it through the Amazon link uh, because it helps the show. So there you go. Okay, so uh, if you would also like to expand your experience with us here on the program, you can do so at expandingrealitypodcast.com, linked down in the show notes. That's also where Rockfin is at. We are doing some pretty cool live stuff over there on Saturday evenings is right now kind of what we're doing, and it's a lot of fucking fun. So come check it out. Uh, linked at the website. There you go. And then also it's got merchandise and uh, socials and all that good stuff. Okay. Now that we've gotten all that out of the way, let's get to this damn thing with Tommy Chong. All right, everybody. Very, very special episode. Look who came by to hang out with it. It is the one and only Tommy Chong. What's up, Tommy? How are you, man? Hey, I'm fine. I'm, I, if I was any better, I'd be worried. Yeah, if I was any better, I'd be twins, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, I, dude, it's good to meet you in person, Nish, uh, finally. So uh, you just been one of those guys, man. You get, you gotta, if you get the opportunity to talk to, t- talk to Tommy, you got to take him up on it. So a lot of teeth yep. in there. So uh, mm-hmm. what made you, I'm just curious, want to do uh, comedy in the first place, man? Ah, uh, it would boiled down to that was the only thing that I was good at that was just me, period. You know, uh, I, I loved watching comedians, but I loved watching jazz players. And I love watching people. And uh, I like playing, you know, I, I like I, I enjoy playing music, but I was always a, a backup uh, musician as opposed to uh, the lead I was never the lead until 
Cheech and I hooked up, and then when Cheech and I hooked up, and then I, you know, just one we he was the lead for the longest time, and then we broke up, and then I, and I found myself alone on that stage, and so then I became a lead, and and uh, I really enjoy it, you know. the The great thing about being a backup is that um, it's it's almost like uh, what we're supposed to do in life, you know, uh, helping others. That that that's always been the been the key to happiness. You see, being being the star doesn't make you happy. In fact, it can make you very unhappy eventually, and it can lead to suicide too. <clears throat> but helping others is, is is first of all, you're always welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> you know, and if they don't want you there, you're free to leave. And I love that phrase you're free to leave that's right and, and that's oh good okay i'm out of here if you don't need me i'm gone you know because I, I love i love being alone i love being by myself i love who i am and i and i love what i do and i love what i have it's a big uh big love thing. and i love where i've been and i love where i'm going <laughs> it's just like one one thing uh, and because I, I got turned on to the the truth so early in life, uh, I, it's like uh, I, I belong to a very select club of elites that uh, somehow end up meeting other elites. I don't know what it is, but it, I guess it's the you know the the law of attraction. You yeah. Know, yeah. Like, like attracts. Like. Like. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's fascinating yeah. too, that you enjoy your alone time, but you're in the spotlight like constantly. And for the longest time, I mean, how did those two jive together? Oh, easy. I mean, being alone is, is a treat. You're not alone, by right. the way, you yeah. know, uh, in fact, if you feel alone, that means you don't know some very <laughs> important facts of life that you should know <laughs> which is that you're a great which is, well it, no what it is is that you're not alone <laughs> you know it's the people that think they are alone that are the you know that the, the miss the point you know they, they failed the test yeah there's because a, you're not alone what's the difference between being lonely and alone right and uh, so yeah in a, in a sense as, as well we talk a lot about cosmic consciousness here on the show and so this unified consciousness so in that sense of course you're connected to everything you're connected to every little air molecule that's floating around here but in a bit in a bigger sense it would seem though also that those people seem to just recluse and feel uh, you know lonely rather than alone and that's that's kind of the way well it again it's a state that that is very personal mm -hmm. and 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 you have to respect people's privacy absolutely and, and and there's a lot of times well it's like cooking you know you're you're not always you're you don't always have the food over the stove you know and there's a lot of times where when, when you marinate you just stick it in a cold place or a hot place or whatever it is and leave it alone you see yeah and, and so that 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 that, that 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 sort of tends to be the rule of thumb with everything you know there's a time and place for everything and uh you know it's just like you don't always have to be on if you're a comedian and in fact the people that are on i feel sorry for them because it's like they can't shut it off you know yeah good point <laughs> it's like the water faucet that won't turn off oh my god <laughs> you know yeah. what am i going to do a hard pass, yeah, uh, yeah. But the, the, but then again, you know, you, <clears throat> everybody sort of like uh, it's it's like winning. You know, people think, oh, you you got to win, you got to win, you got to win. No, you don't have to win. You have to participate. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, Agreed. and you can participate just by watching. You know. Uh, like some people, I, I used to, I used to feel sorry for people that were in wheelchairs and people that were, uh, you know, stuck or, or as we call it, you know, stuck in bed or stuck in a room, you know. And, and then after I, I did a, 
uh, my time in jail, I, I one thing I learned to do was respect other people's lives in yeah. a sense that, again, leave them alone. You know, uh, it, it's it's just being able to. I I I look at I like it like this here. You need direction. You know, and and like the the Bible or the holy books, you know, the different holy books, what they are, they're, they're directions uh, to, uh, to formulas. You know, if you want if you want this, you want to be happy, you want to be prosperous. There's certain formulas that you can follow. Now you can do it instinctively, like a lot of people have. Or, or you can read how other people do it and, and do it that way. You know, there's all sorts of ways to do it because we're, you know, we're, we're so blessed with with our facilities, you know, what we have to work with. And, uh, and, and I don't know, I, I, <laughs> if you're, I guess, uh, I guess it is enlightened. You know, lately I've been, I, I have eye problems, you know, because I'm getting old and, you know, just part of the trip of getting old. And I learned a couple of things that a lot of times you can't see because there's not enough light. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that goes with a lot of, you can stretch that to a lot of things. There's a lot of things you might not know because you don't have enough knowledge. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, and, yeah. I'm going to roll the dice and just say that your issue with your eyes is not glaucoma. Am I right? You know what it is? It's early stages. Really? Well, smoking weed helps with glaucoma. That's why I, I find that's, that incredibly that's what I ironic. Heard. Yeah. Well, you've already that, got the prescription, right? <laughs> yeah, I heard that. And uh, I've been, you know, smoking much. And I, I've always had, uh, I've always been nearsighted. And I, I was nearsighted back so long ago that the, no one knew what it was but the fact that i would get up from my desk and walk up to the front of the class and read the <laughs> the, the blackboard <laughs> kind of give people hints that this guy might need glasses <laughs> well that's hilarious because that's a joke i mean there's your joke right there i was nearsighted before the diagnosis you know what i mean <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's brilliant, Tommy. Nice job. You still got it, ladies and gentlemen, of course. Well, I wanted to ask because you did touch on it. I, I, I want to know where you find yourself spiritually these days. I am. I'm at rest. I've, I, I've evolved. I, I, I'm at the guru okay. stage. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I've reached that. I reached that point. I've been told spiritually to, uh, you know, uh, you've earned the right as age, as you get older, you, you've you earned the right to be quiet. You know, you don't have to add to anything. And what you do when you get older is you allow for people to catch up to you, you know, and, and that way, uh, you know, the gurus, they, they, they'll, they'll give sound truths. I call them truths, not advice. It's more like truths. And sometimes people aren't ready for truth, you know. And like, like sometimes when people start preaching, like if I turn on TV and I'll, I'll see some preachers on TV, you know, and they're working their ass off. I've always reckoned, compared uh, preaching to giving people directions to Disneyland that have no intentions of going. <laughs> okay. And that's brilliant. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> you know, you know, yep. they got no intentions of going. They don't even want to hear about it. So save your breath, save your breath. You know, so, you know, I've learned that I've learned that. age gives it to you, you know, and also my musical uh, training. Cause I never, I was never trained formally, you know, lessons or school or anything else. I, I, I learned everything on, on the job, 
it was on the job training, you know, and playing with better musicians that would give me that look, you know, that <laughs> like, well, and that's, what are you the, doing? <laughs> that's the secret, though. I was a self-taught musician as well, a touring musician for 12 years, went all over the place with it. And that was my thing when I was in a band. I played with people better than me. That was the rule. Always. You had to be better than me to be in my band. And it was, Always. man, it was a game changer. So it's interesting to hear somebody else say that. I love it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's how, that's how you learn. Yep. Because, again, it's rules. Yeah. You, you learn the rules. You don't learn just to tune your instrument. You learn when and where to play and when to drop out, when not to play and when to just listen. You know, it's 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 called respect, too. You know, when, when, <laughs> you like this. Uh, I went to when I was in prison, you know, I'm a celebrity guy, you know, <laughs> and everybody. Oh, they couldn't wait to get me down to the guitar room. They had a, a room that was filled with the end. It used to be a was a, when they had a kiln and a pottery place. Oh, OK. But they yeah. took the pottery out and they, they put put guitars in there. And, and, and they knew I was a guitar player. So, oh, they couldn't wait for me to come down to the guitar room. <laughs> That's awesome. So I come down, I come down there and they hand me a guitar and I start noodling a little bit. Next thing I know, I got 15 guys playing. That's awesome. Just hanging out. No, well, they're playing their version of what they know. Oh, oh my God. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was, it was like in guitar hell, you know, oh, because you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. You don't, but, and you know no one was in tune. You know nobody, you know, was synced uh, up together. No one's listening. Yeah, no yeah. one knew what they were doing. They <laughs> just knew what they were taught. It was good. To, oh, it was. I, I don't think I, I. I never went back. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'd say that's probably I, I would, good. I would get the guitar, uh, I'd check it out, and then I'd go in into the field or somewhere. Let me again because I I only play for my own enjoyment you know I, I was i was never good i i did audition one time when i was a kid there there's a, a, a country singer was looking for guitar players and, and i answered uh, the call but i never owned an electric guitar i only owned a i was so ignorant when it came to music i only owned a, a stand my my uh, mom's guitar my mother bought a guitar when she was pregnant with me and she used to hold it on her tummy and strum it. And that oh. might have got my interest. But but I used to, I took that guitar to an audition. And they're looking for it like a real guitar player. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. cute. It was funny. You know, but that's hilarious too, because uh, the first time I was a lead guitar player was when I got asked to be a lead guitar player in a country band. And the guy bought me a badass Telecaster, man. It was awesome. And it was a lot oh, of fun. Good. But I didn't yeah. know any of that chicken picking stuff, but uh, yeah. you learn, you know, and it's that's what's so cool about it. It's like that opportunity, you know, to learn something yeah. new. You got to take yourself yeah. up on it, man. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I actually had a couple of uh, questions from some friends of mine. Sure. Um, so I wanted to ask you these. So a friend of mine, Mira, wanted to know, uh, is there anything that you wouldn't try again as far as altered states, as far as substances go? Is there anything off the list for you that you've done? No, but there's things that I haven't tried. Okay. That I won't, I won't try. Okay. Uh, her heroin is, is on That's the number one on the list. I, I I once asked this friend of mine. In fact, he was the guy that gave Lenny his dead his, his lethal dose, uh, and he was Lenny Bruce's father-in-law at one time. He was married to Sally Marr, and he was a, a heroin addict. and And I asked him. I said, you know, we we got tight, very tight, Tony. And I asked Tony. I says, what is it about heroin? You know. And uh, he didn't say a word. He just reached in his pocket, pulled out a packet, and handed it to me. He didn't say a word. So I took the packet and put it in my pocket. And then I, when I went home, I put it in the sock drawer. And then about a month later, I went into the sock drawer and pulled it out and flushed it down the toilet. My man. My man. <laughs> I, I said, I said, I, you know, it was a stupid question. Because I know what it is about heroin. Right. You know, it's so good that geniuses will do it, you know, and they can't stop doing it. That's how good it is. 
And I'm not a genius, so I'm not even going to go near that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say a chance, right? I, it, no. That's an interesting one because that's that's me too, man. I, I I would try anything, no needle drugs. That was always my thing. Now I've had heroin and MDMA and with tabs and ecstasy tabs, but in very small amounts and you don't shoot it up and it's very, very different. So it kind of complements the high, not brings you down to this, you know, uh, crazy level. So uh, I'm right there with you. So uh, what do you think of psychedelics though? Oh yeah. The psychedelics changed my whole life. You know, the the lady I'm with now, she was just a friend. She was a neighbor and she was very beautiful. She was a groupie of our band. You know, she was a fo- followed our band, and uh, and we had a nice, nice friendship going. You know, and then I got introduced to uh, acid. And the first acid trip I took with my uh, uh, brother-in-law. I was married at the time, and uh, he was an organ player. And uh, we we took we dropped acid. It was called try this. Okay. It wasn't. There wasn't even a drug. What is it? Well, just try this. See, try you were doing acid before acid was called acid. That's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I did. And uh, and my my buddy uh, Bernie, he just he had a bad trip. He was looking in the mirror and he was like freaking out. You know, he was kind of tripping out. And I was. I, I went outside and I sat under a plum tree, uh, a cherry tree, cherry tree. And the birds and I and, and the tree, we, we become one. <laughs> and, and then, uh, but I was always, I was always on a spiritual kick all my life. Because I know I, I'm, a, I, I know I'm special. And, and uh, I was told that, you know, in various ways my whole life. <clears throat> and so it was another, uh, just another step forward. And so then, uh, the, so the next time I took uh, LSD, I had my, my now wife. She was like my guide, and, and she, she just took me around, and we just walked forever. We used to do a lot of walking back then in Vancouver, and then we took acid together, and uh, and that was the first time we made love. And that was when she got pregnant. <laughs> and, and that was when she had our love child. And eventually that was when we finally ended up together, you know. Uh, I'm still friends with my ex-wife, but, uh, you know, that she, my ex-wife, you know, she wasn't uh, into any kind. She was, uh, it still is, very uh, spiritual in the Baptist church. And she was, but... Uh, no, it was LSD and and, uh, and Shelby. That's amazing. And, and, and we're still together. And then the last the last time we took acid, <laughs> it was a, a, a comedy of errors because we knew what it did and everything. Okay, we got offered this window paint in Denver, and so we're uh, it was a gig, and we played the next day. So I we had the time, and we're off that Sunday. So. We, we we planned it. Okay, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do some window pane, but we're gonna go to a Disney movie so we can see something loving and funny and light and you know. So we found a movie and and we dropped the asset. We took a cab to the to the movie theater and went inside to see Thumbelina. Well, Thumbelina, it's not a cartoon. It's a, it's a real movie about a woman, a young girl marrying a rat. <laughs> yes, yes. It's pretty trippy shit, dude. Yeah. Probably not something you'd want to see. On this, it right? was <laughs> the worst choice. And not only that, but it was in, the, in a ghetto theater in the black area. And these little kids weren't watching the movie. They're just running up and down the, the aisles in the seats. And they, and they, they felt like little rats. You know, oh, <laughs> it felt no. like rats scurrying around. My my three year old daughter was loving the movie, <clears throat> and she she's all watching the movie and and she's digging it. And next thing you know, my wife and I grabbed her and we we headed for the exit. We couldn't take it. And <laughs> she we was went out, the same. We, we we found ourselves outside in in a strange town. It was snow on the ground. We're outside in the back of a theater. 
but so we walked around to the front. There was a, a service station open. We saw that. So we walked over to the service station and, and I kind of as I asked the guy, I says, can you call us a cab? And so he hand, hands me the phone. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you can't said, phone. Uh, yeah. I said, can you call the cab yeah. for me, please? <laughs> it will help. Yeah. And, and, uh, and he did. And we finally made it home, but that was the last acid trip I took. Yeah. That's the last one you've done since. That's the last one. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It's been a minute. And same for me. I, I haven't done it in a quite a long time. I felt like I had a pretty good run with it. You know, got out, got out just fine, learned what I needed to learn and I feel good. Yeah. So yeah. 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 That's like, you know, that, 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 that's a great thing. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, I, I tried everything, you know, cocaine. I did cocaine, but I, I didn't like the, the, after effect yes. or, or the, I don't know. I just didn't like the, the, what it, the kind of people that put you around. Yes. And stuff, yes. You know, I, Great point. and, and, and I had bad, bad karma with cocaine. Like one time uh, I borrowed when Cheech and I were trying to, <clears throat> you know, going to auditions and hanging out with, with, uh, you know, people that had already made it, you know, that kind of thing. A lot of coke around, and the three dog night, that group, and and we knew them, and we're hanging out at their parties, and and I bored my wife's, my ex wife's car, yeah, because my girlfriend <laughs> or my wife now, we never had a car, we had a scooter, but I I bored her car, and it was parked in front of the party we were at. And we went in and we did some coke. And then I came out looking for the car and was gone. What the hell? Did I, and I remember parking it here. And there was a homeless guy sitting out there. He said, oh, is that your car? Uh, was? <laughs> what do you yeah. mean? He's, yeah, I saw it. It took <laughs> off by itself and it wrapped itself around a telephone pole at the bottom of the hill. Oh, God. You didn't put the emergency brake on? I guess not. Oh, the, man. Uh, Ex-wife car, ex-wives. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, it was, but she's so cool. You know, I mean, she understood. Okay. But that was, that, and then she said to Coke one time, uh, the first time we were in uh, New York, and we had a lot of fans in New York, like all the Saturday Night Live, you know, Belushi and Akra and everybody, they're all big fans. Well, Belushi for sure. And so, <laughs> And so we're hanging with Bellucci, and of course we're doing a ton of cocaine, and, and so we get down to the bitter end to do our show, and and we're so cocky, you know how cocaine makes you oh, feel. Yeah. Hey, yeah, how's invincible. everybody doing? Yep. Hey, nice to see you. Uh, blah blah blah. We bombed. It was one of the worst shows we've ever done in oh, our lives because no. New York comedians, I mean New York audiences, they're if you don't get them right away, they are deadly yeah they are they will eat you alive you know they're like like wild animals and and you're like a feast they're, they'll chew you up and they they started doing that to teach and then, and then the more we bombed the more we went the wrong way oh you know? yeah you dug in we're, yeah. we're, we're doing mexican humor in new york there's no mexicans in new york and what they are they're called puerto ricans and it's right. a whole different culture yeah. And so Cheech and I were arguing before we even got off the stage, you know, yeah. and we never did cocaine since. And, and I, I kind of, I, I never did like cocaine. Uh, you know, I like, I like my pot. I like to be mellow and cool. I don't like to be, you know, on the edge, you know, or pissed off, you know. I completely agree. Yeah. Uh, well, I was curious then, um, who is the most fun person to smoke weed with that you've ever smoked with? I guess I, I uh, he never smoked, but his name was uh, Gay Delorme. He's a guitar player uh, th that wrote uh, our hit, you know, "Earache My Eye." You know, Mama yeah. talking to me. I, I wrote the lyrics, but he wrote the he wrote the the, the melody, and he played guitar on the on the track. It was the only track that I produced, actually. Uh, he. He, we didn't never knew what drug he did, but he was one of those comedians, guitar. He was one of the greatest guitar players alive. Do you know who Lenny Bro is? 
Lenny Burrell. Uh, uh-uh. Yeah. Okay. Well, look when you up. get a chance, yeah. look him up. Uh, Lenny Bro and Gay Delorme played the same way. They started out as steel guitar players. Oh, yeah. So they got this uh, action with all their fingers. Yeah. You know, yeah. both hands. Mm-hmm. They can play with both all their fingers on both hands. And they can play flamingo, classical, or you name it, or jazz at any tempo because they, they have that that ability, you know, to, 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 you know, it's not a single, you know, one pick, it's, it's all your fingers. And, oh, they're incredible. Well, as incredible as a guitar player was, he was funnier as a comedian. We actually based our whole act on Gay Delorme humor that style of humor that became Cheech and Chong because Cheech and I both we we were I started an improv club in a strip bar and Gay Delorme actually helped me write the first uh, first couple of bits that we did without Cheech oh and and uh, and <laughs> let me tell you about the strip bar it was a uh, like a it was Vancouver's first uh, uh, titty bar and and, uh, and it so it attracted all the bikers the the businessmen horny businessmen and, <laughs> and you know those types you yeah. know and and very hot looking girls you know they're Canadian and very young and very beautiful and and, and young and incredibly incredibly bo- incredible bodies just smoke <clears throat> shows and so but the show was, you know, it was a strip show, boring, you know, uh, and there was no lap dance or anything like that. It was like a Canadian style trying to be decent stripper club, you know. He just didn't and work. so I, I just, I, what well, worked, you know, we had a lot of perverts in there. And okay. A lot of money. It made a lot of money, shitload of money. But then I was looking at it from a the- theatrical standpoint. And I realized you know, the girls are so beautiful in their street clothes, but when they put on their costumes, they look very slutty, you know? Uh-huh. And so I thought, you know, what if I did an improvisational club using the girls as actresses instead of uh, dancers? And so I, I, I and I, then I arranged for the MC and the, uh, and the singer, you know, we had a vocalist there and we had a band too. The band was going to play behind the curtain. And so we started uh, the imp- an improvisational uh, theater. And the first bit was hilarious. The first bit, because we we never let anybody know we're changed from a titty bar to a to a, a, a <laughs> improvisational club. And so the bikers are all sitting there. They're waiting for the girls to come. <laughs> and instead of the girls, we send out a mime artist. <laughs> and. And the and they they were so stunned they didn't know what to do. they're just waiting their anticipation they knew girls were going to come up but okay they, my martyrs and then we sent out the Gate Alarm as a, as a classical guitarist he's he plays uh, he's playing for the my martyrs and then Dave the doorman <laughs> comes out and Dave's got a full beard he was my partner for a while full beard and he had this funny hat, cowboy hat on kind of and he walks up to the microphone and he sings this stupid song <laughs> i dream of genie with the light brown hairier because genie is my favorite wire hair terrier <laughs> and the bikers now that was the end of the road with the bikers they what and before the bikers could do anything, I come out on stage. I kick open the door. We had a door built in the back for the improv club. And I, I and I, it looked like I just woke up. And I got my hair all messy and I got, I'm shirtless. I'm in my pants and bare feet. And I got a rolled up newspaper. And I walk over to Dave and I go, what kind of fucking song <laughs> is that? And I start beating him with the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> and the bikers went nuts. The oh, whole yeah. the place exploded. It took almost uh, what uh, fifteen minutes to to get to the punchline, but when we did, it it was incredible. The the it was just incredible. And then after that, 
we would, uh, you know, do an improv thing and we'd take, uh, uh, you know, suggestions from the audience. And then we go back and have an intermission, and, you know, and I think in the first, yeah, no, the girls didn't dance. We had an intermission and then we come back and then, the, then we had the girls in that, but we, we, ch- that, that, that club got so popular, but the problem was instead of having, you know, 25 horny bikers with a lot of money. <laughs> we got 350 theater goers who would count their change and sip and sip their wine, you know? Yeah. Not and, as fun. And some, some wouldn't even drink. I'll oh, just water, please. And so we, we, but the show was so good. Yeah. It was, the show was so good. And then and that's when I met, uh, we had a straight man and everything, a real actor, but he got, his wife found out what he was doing. So, so then I needed a straight man. And then this mutual friend, uh, he was a, a friend of the of the show. He had a, a hippie magazine and he knew this funny little guy that uh, would make a perfect uh, fit for our, for our show. And that's when I met Cheech. That's so cool. Yeah, that is so cool. You're probably the responsible for a few kinks that can't be explained. Like, let's say a few of those bikers may have gone home because they showed up in horny mode, ready to see some action, and they got a mime instead. And so maybe they went home and looked up mime mime porn or something like that. You know, you're probably responsible for a couple of things. So now every time a dude comes out and plays with a guitar, you know, they kind of get a little little tingle down there. You know, they're in that mode. Man, that's awesome! What a great story, though. I'd, I've never heard that before. That's that's badass, man. No, that was that was how we started our, uh, the biker career, and uh, oh, oh man, I, my whole life, you know, around weed. Uh, we had an after hours club that was killer. It was a bottle club, and then the weed came in, and then because the cops used to raid the club every now and then, get all the liquor that was not supposed to be there. And, I, and now that I think about it, I think they were kind of in cahoots with the liquor people because, oh, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. they would steal the liquor and then, uh, you know, and then they'd have to buy more, you know, that kind of thing. And pay taxes uh, on it. Yeah. 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 That whole thing. And then, then all of a sudden everybody was smoking and then the cops were trying to bust us for, for smoking weed and they busted quite a few people. In fact, the, the, the main narc was, his name was Stadenko. Stadenko. And St- Stadenko. Yeah, that was his name. He was a, a Ukrainian. A Stadenko, yeah. And uh, he was like a, he was, a, he was a, a legend in Vancouver for busting people for smoking weed. You know, we had a young kid that was a boarder at my, my folks house and he had a bag of weed. He ended up going to jail for like six months or something. See, it's crazy. Uh, you know, it was for nothing. He, he was, you know, like now it's legal. So anyway, uh, when we did our movie, when it was time to, uh, to, to figure out the cop, well, I named him Stadenko. <laughs> Beautiful. That's perfect. <laughs> and, yes. and I outed, I outed him so much that he got transferred to Turkey. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he damn. He spent the rest of his career in Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when he retired, the fellow narcs called me up because they all became, you know, everybody became a fan of the movie. And, and especially when they got one of their own, you know, in the movie, you know. And so when he re, when Abe Stadenko retired, the his partners called him called me up, and they said Abe's retiring, and we want you to we want to present him with a poster of the Up and Smoke because his name was on the poster. <laughs> <laughs> and Abe apparently Abe wasn't that thrilled, you know, because because he was serious. Yeah, you know, but we made him a clown in the movie, and so whenever anybody found out that, that he was the Danko, they would, hey man, what's happening? You know, they would, they would treat him like a, like a Chicano. Oh man, it was funny. Well, and this is a glo- your your global phenomena, so I'm sure it made its way over to Turkey. There's probably nowhere oh, in the world he could hi- he could hide. Yeah, everywhere. <laughs> uh, well, that's one of the reasons he had re- he had to retire. You know, he was too famous. Damn. And they, they told me that, you know, they had nothing for him to do. And so he finally, they gave him a going away present. I said, why isn't he retiring? He's, well, you know, he's kind of, he's, he's a, uh, that Barney Miller, ever see Barney Miller? Oh, and yeah. There was one cop that he was retired, but he hung around, around yes. the cop shop. Yeah. That was Abe. 
<laughs> like it just wants to still be part of it. You know, it's hard to switch gears, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you know. I, I wanted to ask, have, have you ever been just too high? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. What? Luckily, no, a couple of times I wasn't home a couple of times. One time I was, uh, I was in, uh, Colorado you know how they just legalized it? Yep. And so I'm in Colorado, and I and I started coming down with the flu. And so the the club owner, the, you know, the dispensary owner says, "Here, take a gummy." So I so I took a half. He said, "Just take a half." So I took a half, and I sat there for a long time, and I wasn't feeling it. And you know, and I'm not good at gummies. You know, I'm not good at edibles because I, I'm old school. You know, it's a muffin. I'll eat a fucking muffin. You know, I'm not gonna <laughs> eat a corner of a muffin. You know, I'm gonna yeah. eat the muffin. <laughs> and so I ate the gummy bear. <clears> and the then I, I had to, do, I had to do a, I ate the other half, and I had to do a, a meet and greet when I got home, <laughs> and it was like breakfast at Bernie's. I literally <laughs> sat on the. In the, on the edge of the couch with my eyes closed and people would sit next to me and take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> I could talk, but bare, barely, barely. Oh, well, a few times. Uh, yeah. Another, another time. Ever heard of Rick Simpson oil? Uh, no. Okay. Rick Simpson is from Canada. It's a very interesting story because Rick Simpson uh, and his his buddy got uh, um, uh, pancreatic cancer. Mm. That's that's a that, yeah uh, thing. Um, so Rick Simpson gave him this oil, this hash oil that he that he had fixed got. Anyway, the guy took it for a few times and felt good. But he had to do the operation, so he went in for his operation, and they were kind of surprised because he, he instead of being sick, he was walking walking around. And so they give him an X-ray first to see where it was, and and they couldn't find it. It had gone. the The tumor had disappeared, and so they called them. And so they asked what Rick Simpson asked him what you know. That's the guy. What he did. He's the only thing he did was cannabis <laughs> and so they called the cops the doctors called the cops no way yeah and reported them and this is the <laughs> thing right because they wouldn't make any money off of him getting cured from cannabis they want the That's cancer charges right. they want the radiation now, instead of worrying about the guy dying of, of pancreatic cancer because it's a death sentence yes my, yes. my father-in-law died of it there, I, a friend of mine died I've everybody yep but Rick Simpson oil, and then the same oil, this other friend of Rick's had a uh, some cancer on his skin, on his face. And so he rubbed the Rick Simpson oil on, on his face. That disappeared. Really? And so they, they, they thought they were on to something, and they were trying to find a place to have meetings. And, and because all of them were uh, veterans of the armed services, they were that old that uh, they were using uh, uh, the Legion Hall as a meeting place. But because they were dealing with marijuana, the Legion kicked them out. <laughs> they, they weren't allowed to do the meetings there. And this is to cure fucking cancer. Dude, this, it's insane. It's insanity. I mean, do these people even hear it what they're is. saying? You know, I mean, they, they tried everything, but, you know, that's Canada, you know, uh, that, that's, you know, they, they get one, you know, you're not supposed to do that. I don't care if it saves your life, you know, and my job is to make sure you don't do that. that that's the kind of weird shit that, that, that's going on. But, uh, yeah, I've been, I've been a few times. Uh, one time I took that Rick Simpson oil. <laughs> now, oh, yeah, I guess it was around... Yeah, I, was I healing at the time? Yeah, I was at a yeah I was at a, a, a hospital, and uh, I was in my basement. <laughs> I got a little man cave down there, a little workbench where I make uh, my uh, knot of pipes, and uh, and I'm, I was I was there, and 
And I took the oil and I said, I got to sit down. Uh (laughs) I sat down, light was off. And then I said, oh, you know, I better get upstairs. I couldn't move out of the chair. (laughs) I could not move out of the chair. I sat there. I said, come on, it's easy. You just put one foot in front of the other. And finally, I made it upstairs. And I made it up another stairs to my bed. Took off the clothes, crawled in the bed. <laughs> Done. <laughs> and yeah. then that's where I stayed for at least a day and a night. <laughs> and Cheech, Cheech and I were working on a, a movie or we were working on something. Anyway, he come over to see me and and I'm in bed. And I, I my eyes couldn't really focus on, on Cheech. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've been stoned. Oh yeah, I would say so. I mean, and that's the thing, right? I mean, it because everybody wants to smoke with you, so I'm sure everybody, you know, you're constantly just getting asked to smoke, which is a wonderful thing, right? That's a good problem to have. But I was curious if that ever happened to where you got too high with somebody who was just like a fan or somebody that just wanted to smoke you out. Oh, that way, no, no. Well, no, I mean, I've in never... general, but I was just curious if well, that had happened. Well, what too. I did one time, I was on the trailer park boys i was on their show mm-hmm. and and they were they were doing that trip you know uh, who can smoke the bomb who can who can out smoke chong you know <laughs> and so I, I i would just take a little token hand it to the guy and, and make him do the big rips yeah then, nice and then he'd do it i said no you haven't got enough <laughs> that's smart see this <laughs> is why you're the it. master he kept doing it and so finally he couldn't take it anymore and, uh, and i would just do a little little hit no, I, I know, you know, I, I, it's all ego and it's all ignorance too, you know. And, you know, when they start doing the, who smokes the most, I know, like Snoop Dogg says that the only guy, you know, Willie smoked him out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I smoked with Snoop Dogg. And the only thing I can say about Snoop Dogg is that when you pass him the joint, say goodbye because you're never <laughs> going to see that joint again. <laughs> He bogarts like uh, like a rapper, like huh? nobody's business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As yeah. you do, you don't yeah. see it. That's funny. One man. time I got I got high with Arnold Schwarzenegger and all the all the muscle heads, you know. And when they would meet over at this uh, Zabo Kazuski, so it's another muscle head. He was Mister Natural, and everybody else was on steroids except Zabo, and Zabo had the best body of them all. But he never, he'd win every body part, but never win the overall because he was about my side, five foot nine, you know, <clears throat> five foot ten. And then, uh, but Zabo was Mr. Natural. In fact, there's a song called Nature Boy. There was a boy, and Zabo claims to be the, the guy that they wrote the song about. And uh, I believe, but anyway, Zabo had a, a thing, he, they had a bomb, like the Chong bomb. It was, a bit, it was about a three-footer, and they would put an eighth of weed in, in the bowl, and they light it with a blowtorch, and then they would all take monster hits. And the whole idea was to suck that whole, that whole burning coal into the, into the thing so it would explode, oh, hit nice. the water and explode. And even more, and, you know, these guys have got incredible lungs from all the bodybuilding, you know. And so it came around to my turn, and I went over and took a little. <laughs> <laughs> and they looked at, they gave me that look because they did the whole light up the fire and everything. And oh, I, yeah. I, I, I go with it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a comedian in me, you, you know, because you I, I'm, I'm, never, I'm not going to try to outdo anybody. I'm going to try to out funny everybody. It, that's it, that's it got, better than anything it, you could have done. Yeah. It got a laugh. It got a laugh. Absolutely. And it also gave me a reputation. Even. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, well, I uh, let's wrap it up on this question, man. I kind of wanted to go out just on a on a curious note here for myself personally. I just want to know what gives you hope for the future. Like, what gets you excited to get out of bed every morning? The fact that we're only here for a little while. And every day is a blessing. Every minute is a blessing. Um, because I know, uh, you know, I, I know that we are eternal beings. Our spirits, they're eternal. They've always been here. 
and we're only here for the adventure and the in the knowledge you know we got we got to learn and sometimes it's hard to say what we, what we're here to learn but it's all ordained before before we even get our consciousness you know uh, because the spirit the spirit world is r- really where we reside and and the spirit world here's what I, I I've learned over the past actually the past year um, for every action there's an, a reaction for every up you can't have up without down you can't have left without right you can't have good without bad and so when you look at the the universe our physical universe it's endless they said they they said and it keeps expanding which kills me because it keeps expanding and it's endless so how do we know it's expanding yeah. <laughs> endlessness there has to be- is expanding yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> so so it's so 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 what is so the the physical universe is everything is everything what is the opposite of everything nothing nothing the spiritual world is the size of nothing because there's no want need or desire in the spiritual world there's just spirit and the spirit like they say about uh, uh, angels dancing on the head of a pin you know our spirit our, our physical spirit is about the size of a thought think of it See, because we're all, everything is electrical matter, positive, negative. You need both in order to, to have the power. You need a positive and negative. Well, in the spiritual world, there's only positive. There's only love. See, it's a physical world that's negative. And the positive world is a spiritual world. And so, and that's where we reside. You know, now we're here to learn. We're in school. You know, and obviously we're finite, you know, we're not infinite, we're finite because we all have, we're only here for a little while, yeah. no matter how long the little while is. And when you're here too long, you know, when you get the guy that's 114 years old, you know, you almost have to wheel him out in a Give wheelbarrow. Give a rest, you know? buddy. You've had a good run, man. Come back again, you know? You do this as many times as you want, right? It's like, all right. Yeah, yeah it is almost like, why are they keeping him here for so long? Yeah. It's, uh, are you trying to set some kind you, of record, you, you, man, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so so it's it's my knowledge. And when you know that, when you know that you are uh, immortal, then everything makes sense. Then, then you, you can. I, I understand when people, you know, very close to you leave, you know, die, and they transition. Yeah, there's such a thing as grief, and there's such a thing as mourning, and and but there's also such a thing as as happiness, uh, because. Again, like the like the slaves in in New Orleans, they celebrate death, you know, because he's free at last. He's free at last, you know, mm-hmm. because they're free from the the burdens of death. But 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 one last thing that I, I I had an epiphany watching the watching the the Super Bowl. Okay, and and I saw why uh, the effects of slavery. I saw the, 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 the fruits of that horrible time. Whenever you see the black guys, the athletes running around doing these incredible things, that was only because their ancestors went through this horrible physical time where they, they, they got all the sleep they can get. They had all the proper food they can get and they worked their ass off as much as they, as they needed. And they created the industrial revolution. I mean, uh, yeah, was, was created by, with slavery and, and, and rather than to, to, to take the negative view of it, you take the positive view of it because like i say earth is a gym 
you know, and we're here to learn and we're here to learn whatever we need to learn in order to we to further the, the, the race and all, also to further our own our own uh, uh, journey as we go. Yeah. But I can't share this. I can share it with you, but I, I would never share this, the, th- the thoughts. In fact, I wouldn't share any thoughts that I had with you with anybody else. Because, again, you know, they want to give directions to Disneyland unless they want to go there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is the thing. And you got to be a lighthouse. That's how we operate here, man. Nobody's pushing anything or any ideology on you. And I thought I w- was thinking what you maybe saw at the Super Bowl that you were going to tell me about was the Masonic um, halftime show that happens every year. The ritual that they perform. Uh, I didn't know if you dove into those or anything like that yet. Um, but the man- Masonic? Uh, yeah, like the Masonic rituals, like it's a big Masonic ritual, the whole halftime show. Have you not gone down that rabbit hole yet? They've been doing it forever. I, I, I explain. I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you some videos. I'll send you some stuff of some people who break down the all of the Super Bowl halftime shows. Just or the, the rituals. Half- Yes, just just the halftime shows and how they're ritualistic. Yes, it's it's crazy. Oh, man. sure. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sure you've oh, gone down yeah, it, but I'll yeah. still send you some stuff. Well, I know we're up against a hard break here, so I just wanted to uh, tell you what an honor this was, man, and how much fun this was. I, You know, I, I'll have to have you on next time to talk just spirituality and UFOs. We can go deep with it, man, so we'll have to have you back on and do that. <laughs> I, uh, you'll, you'll love my UFO. Uh, oh, dude. <laughs> Yeah, then uh, uh, we're going to book it then, all right? Uh, you know what, Tommy yeah. Chong, thank you again for this, man. This was wonderful. It was just a bucket list thing for me, and I'm grateful. So thank you, my friend. Yeah. Come back anytime. Okay. We'll see you again. Man, what a cool dude. You know, you you hear about some people, you see them, you see their careers and all that good stuff, and then you go to talk to them, and you find out they're actually way cooler than you thought. So that was a lot of fun. I'm grateful for Tommy for swinging by. Uh, you, he's not hard to find, but I'm going to link him in the show notes anyway. What the hell? So there you go on that. Uh, linked also down in the show notes is going to be our affiliate link. So we partnered with Food Forest Abundance to be a part of their change of the entire place with replacing lawns with edible food for your family so you can survive. And this is how you get your freedom from fear on. So check the link down there to do that. Also, if you would like to host your own podcast, if you're just like, man, I'm thinking about hosting a podcast and I just don't know what I do or whatever. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I'm cool enough. You are fucking cool enough, first of all. Second of all, do it because it's awesome. It's like the coolest thing ever. You get to talk to people like Tommy fucking Chong and it's amazing. Uh, So definitely do that, but check the link down there. If you're curious about that, Uh, you buy a month. I think they give you two months free. It's crazy cool. So also down in the show notes is going to be our Amazon affiliate link. We partnered with the machine so that anything that you guys want to buy, do it through this link on Amazon. If you want to buy new uh, rolling papers or a bong or something like that, do it through the Amazon link. It helps the show. So there you go. Uh, Something you're going to need to do anyway. And if you're not the one doing it, pass it to your mom. Just send that link over to your mom. Be like, hey, buy your shit on here. It helps the show. She'll be like, oh, okay. Anyway, uh, also, if you would like to expand your experience with us here on the show, you can do so at the link down there titled expandingrealitypodcast.com. That is going to be where links to all of the socials, Rockfin, merchandise, all that good stuff. Now, over on Rockfin, uh, we are doing some really, really cool live stuff. So make sure that you guys check that out. Also, if you were questioning, should I go on Rockfin? Yeah, there's a bunch of amazing people over there. It's a lot of fun. So after all of that guys go out into this beautiful place whatever the hell this thing is and y'all pick up a piece of litter be nice to everybody that you come across animal entity no matter what show them some kindness and some love that's how you do it i you know buy somebody a coffee or a meal in line around or near you or something like that it makes a small thing for you but a massive ripple effect through the collective so take yourself up on that opportunity next time you have it also uh, get out of the left hand lane that's a pain in the ass And above all and anything else, guys, go out into this beautiful place, whatever the hell it is, and y'all just be good to one another. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you next time.